Hi, everybody. I'm Melissa from cloudmom.com. We are at month 19 with your toddler and with my toddler, Bracey. Should my toddler visit the doctor at 19 months of age? Your toddler will not be visiting the doctor at 19 months unless you missed your prior 18-month-old checkup or there's something specific that you want your doctor to take a look at. How much should my 19-month-old be talking? Some 19-month-olds are saying 10 to 20 words and some are saying even more words. <laughs> Some toddlers are able to link two or more words together with a meaning such as give me or go there or throw that. Many 19 month olds understand direction words such as go, stop, don't, come or directives such as stand up, sit down, come over here, close the door. Oh, Gracie, you have to put back on the light in the doctor's office. Thank you, Gracie. If you're worried about how many sounds your child is uttering, talk to your doctor. They might recommend speech therapy. Early intervention in cases where a child might be delayed in their speech is crucial. How can I encourage my 19 month old to talk? In addition to narrating everything in your daily life, talking as much as possible, <laughs> singing as much as possible, reading, playing with your child and trying to make every day as language rich as possible. At this point, you might want to incorporate some more organized activities into your child's day. I have a list on my phone of little things to do with Bracy to try to develop these basic learning building blocks. Here's what I do. Numbers 1 through 20, colors and try to go beyond primary colors. Body parts and you can get detailed with this such as color the hair, eyelids, eyelashes, eye color, fingernails, farm animals and wild animals, vehicles like car, train, plane, truck. Look at all the motorcycles. No, Bracey, you can't go on that. Opposites, big, small, wide, thin, shadowy, light, loud, soft, huge, tiny, anything you can think of that's an opposite. This is great to get your kid thinking in terms of concepts that describe things in their everyday life. Emotions, happy, sad, excited. Try to get your child in the habit early on of recognizing when they themselves experience different emotions. This can help them develop empathy regarding others. Describe the names of the foods you eat and describe how they are, such as sweet or savory or salty or spicy. And here are some songs that are great to try. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Humpty Dumpty, the wheels on the bus, Old MacDonald had a farm, Itsy Bitsy Spider, Frere Jaca, I'm sure you have many more. Get in the habit of singing these songs to your toddler. There's a reason they're so famous and they've been handed down generation to generation. These songs go a long way towards teaching kids a lot of language. How much should my 19 month old be moving? Many 19 month olds are not only walking, they're running, they're getting up and down the stairs through crawling, and they're climbing on and off of the sofa or the chair. Many can bend down and pick up objects while standing up. Bracy is able to do this. Why should I let my toddler mess up my house? Well, we all like to have a neat house. It really gives you a nice feeling of being in control, and it's also much more practical and a time saver because it's easier to find things. But when it comes to toddlers, the way they learn is through feeling things, touching things, moving things and playing with things. So all of a sudden, every object in your house is gonna become an opportunity for your toddler to play. And they're not really gonna be aware of all your nice little piles and the ways in which you've ordered things. So as an example, in the morning after I fed Bracy, he tends to wanna to go over to his nice stack of diapers and start to bring them to me one by one. And he thinks he's actually helping me and it's very cute. And it's kind of annoying because then I have to go and like put all the diapers back and all the rest of it. But really, this is a very important part of his learning. What's happening when he does a simple thing like this? And think about this with your child too. Don't think about it that your child is messing up your house. Think about it that your child is engaged in a very educational activity. Okay, number one, he's bending down. He's developing the hand and eye coordination to be standing up while reaching down for an object and picking it up. He's then holding the diapers. He's bringing them to me. He's realizing that they feel soft, that they feel billowy. While he's doing that, I'm saying, oh, you have one diaper, you have two diapers. And he's sort of delivering them. So there's a whole thing he's realizing about how human beings pass objects back between each other in an effort to help each other. So there's, there's a lot going on in this tiny little thing. Don't shut it down. 
Don't say the moment your toddler reaches for something in your nice, clean and tidy house, no, 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 because you want them to do this. This is how they learn. A quick word on your toddler's social and emotional development. Toddlers this age can have very, very strong preferences and some have quite a lot of difficulty transitioning between activities. Try to stay calm and just observe the whole thing because you can't do very much when it comes to controlling your toddler's moods and tantrums are gonna start to run rampant. What I find is that the more I can make my child feel as if somehow they're in control, the less tantrums they have. So try to give your toddler a lot of choice over small things that don't matter. What color crayon, what type of vegetable, which fruit they would like, which type of cheese they would like. Whatever small little choice you can give your child, what toy to play with, what book to read, give them those choices. Because when it comes to other things, such as the fact they have to sit and eat a meal or they have to go down to sleep, they will experience a lot less choice. Okay, so how do I get my very, very stubborn toddler into the stroller? This can be a huge battle. What happens with Bracey is he does what I call the surfboard. His body gets as stiff as a surfboard. I put him in the stroller. He refuses to bend and allow me to strap him in. And he sort of slides down, almost like hitting his face on the bar that's on the front of the stroller. So it's a huge challenge. How can you get around this? Well, number one, this might be a good time to give your toddler a nice little yummy treat, even though you're not supposed to bribe when it comes to food, but you might need that. Number two, try to give them a book or a toy to hold on to that will give you enough time to get those stroller straps moving. Number three, I've had to sometimes put Bracy in the stroller on his legs, on his feet, and then sort of tickle him and play with him and get him to like go down and put his butt in the stroller so I can start to strap him in. Okay. Another thing about the straps, in an ideal world, you have like the two top straps, you have the side straps, they're all securely in there, but sometimes this is not so possible. So what I try to do is at least get two straps going and then I take off in like a jogging fashion so Bracey thinks it's fun, like a race, and then I put the other straps on because otherwise I just can't seem to get him in the stroller. And the best way to get your child in the stroller is to have someone help you just like changing a diaper at this stage, it's a very, very tricky thing to do. And sometimes it takes two, baby. It takes two, baby. It takes two. And that means it might even be a stranger. Don't shy away from this. Every person you see on the playground is having the same problem. They're also having trouble getting their toddler into the stroller when it's time to go home and they don't want to go home. So just ask for help. Say, listen, I can't get my kid in the stroller. Can you please help me? And they, I'm sure, will help you. What are good intellectual activities for a 19-month-old toddler? In addition to engaging in a lot of the activities that you've been doing over prior months, such as stacking blocks, playing with trains, sorting shapes and colors, and playing with other manipulatives, try to introduce Play-Doh at this point and if you can handle the mess, finger painting. Put a plastic cover down on your kitchen table, put your child in nothing but an old onesie and just go for it. Let them make a mess, let them get in the habit of doing the finger painting. Play-Doh is actually a lot easier to deal with because it's much less messy. These are very, very educational toys for children and the beginning of what will become creativity as they start to see that they can actually design and create and make things on their own. Now, one thing about the finger painting, don't expect anything more than a few minutes because as soon as you know, your child will be running around with paint all over their hands. They'll be wanting to get all over your living room. So you're gonna to wanna to wash those hands and that will be a very quick activity, but it's still a very worthwhile thing to do. Another word on physical activities for a 19 month old toddler. This month I have a new theme which is get dirty and get messy. First of all, germs and dirt are good. They build your child's immune system. And you wanna get your child into the habit very early on of having a little bit of a thicker skin, a skinned knee as some people say. So get them in the habit of walking barefoot. If they fall down, don't make a big deal of it. Even if they get a scab, just ignore it and see how they react. You want them running around outside and getting these little scrapes and bruises because that is part of growing up and learning how to deal with that is an important part of their ability to develop 
their resistance. So with that said, here's a list of some really great activities for a 19 month old toddler. And again, make sure they get right in there and do them and don't worry about running after them and giving them a lot of sympathy or hugs and cuddles with every minor scrape, scratch, or bruise. You want them to learn that these little things can happen and they themselves can deal with them and they're not a cause for drama or unhappiness. Playing in the grass with leaves, with flowers, and with branches, including by running around with bare feet. Playing in the mud and getting incredibly dirty. Playing in the sandbox, the only rule being don't throw sand all over another child. Drawing with a stick in the dirt. Drawing with chalk on a sidewalk. Make an obstacle course with some old pillows, some backpacks, whatever you can think of. And for the final activity, classic hide and seek. What should my 19 month old be eating? Keep introducing healthy, fresh foods from all of your basic food groups. So you wanna opt for whole grains, brown rice, and brown pasta over white rice. You wanna have fresh fruit and fresh vegetables, as many different types as you can. Try to get new and different forms of dairy, non-processed cheese, plain yogurt, all other sorts of dairy. Try mozzarella, try ricotta, try different types of yogurt, including goat milk yogurt. And by the way, your child does not need the sweetened yogurt. They don't need the sugar. And then try different types of protein like hummus. You can opt for lentils, beans, in addition to chicken and beef and other sorts of meats. What does my schedule look like? with my 19 month old baby. Well, we're still in the middle of transitioning down to one nap, which can be a very difficult transition because some kids get quite, quite tired. So the nap can be a little bit all over the place. They might even take a nap one morning, then the next day they don't take a nap until the afternoon. They might wanna go down quite early for their nap. The way I design these schedules is just as a basic template you can Design it according to your particular day. If your day starts at eight, start the schedule then. If your day starts at nine, start the schedule then. The idea is that your baby's having frequent meals, regular naps, and regular snacks so that their energy level remains consistent so that they get good nutrition and so that they get good rest. So with all that said, here's the schedule that we've been doing over the past month and I hope that it helps you guys out. 7 a.m., a feed and breakfast or breakfast and then give milk or a milk substitute. 9.30, give a snack. 11 a.m., a feed and then lunch. Put your baby down to sleep between about noon and two to three p.m. This is an early lunch and nap because your toddler who's just transitioning away from two naps will likely be tired. 3 p.m., a feed and a snack. 5.30 p.m., dinner. 6.30 p.m., a final milk feeding. And 7 p.m., bedtime. How much should my 19-month-old weigh? The average 19-month-old boy weighs. 24 pounds, six ounces, which is 11.2 kilos. And the average baby girl weighs 23 pounds, nine ounces, which is 10.9 kilos. At his 19 month old checkup, Bracey weighed approximately 11.02 kilos, which is 24 pounds, two ounces. Bracey had only gained a bit of weight from the prior month, but his doctor was not concerned. That said, Bracey has gotten super close to the average weight for boys. Here's the Bracey update. April was a very, very fun month for Bracey. He enjoyed having his grandparents visit and getting outside for a lot of playground time. At home, opening doors, bringing diapers and books to mommy and playing with balls with his older siblings remained his favorite activities. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you back next month for month 20.